Hey YouTube, Rick Wilson here. We're going to do a matter of time part four. I did parts one through three earlier, much earlier. As these things come into my head, I do a new video. Uh, this, what, this matter of time part four is about the Big Bang. What caused the Big Bang? What happened just before the Big Bang? Which nobody's been able to figure out until now. Um, so anyway, it has to do with the Higgs field, but we're not going to talk about the Higgs field. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, space-time, which most representations look like this, because um, most most scientists use space-time. I don't believe in space-time and gravity. I don't think gravity exists. I think it has to do with the Higgs field and time differentials, which causes the effects that mimic gravity. But we're not going to go there with this video. That's in my er earlier videos. So we're just going to discuss it with space-time, which is what everybody's used to. Space-time. It's actually the Higgs field, but I can prove what I'm about to show you using space-time. It don't make no difference for the purpose of this video. Okay, now most scientists agree that the Big Bang happened when two brains touched each other. Now let me let me move the camera in on another diagram here. Now, hold on. Now when I say brains, I don't mean brains like your brain. I mean brains like a membrane. There's something called brains that existed before space-time. They're in another dimension outside of our universe. Just a fraction so close to our universe they can almost touch, but it's in another dimension. And there's two brains. Now most scientists believe these brains have always existed and the creation of the universe happened when these two brains touched. They believe that these brains kind of float and flutter like they're in wind and at some point they touched each other and released so much energy that the universe was created. I don't believe that. <laughs> Okay, I do believe the universe was caused by two brains colliding, not just touching. I don't think just floating in the breeze and they just touched and then boom, the universe happened. I think these brains had to smash into each other with tremendous velocity, like two locomotives moving a million miles an hour crashing into each other. It, it took that kind of a collision between these two brains to create the amount of energy it took to create the universe. Uh, but what would cause these brains? to do that. What, what would cause these brains to collide so intensely? Um, we're, I'm going to show you. So let's, let's, let's jump ahead now. Let's forget the Big Bang now. Let's jump ahead to the end of the universe to explain the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to change, move the camera now to another diagram. Okay, this is like a crude drawing representation of space-time, the universe. This is our entire universe and it's spreading. It's uh, expanding, and they say it's actually accelerating as it expands, which I don't believe either. I think the time, there's a difference in time between now and the past, and it just gives the appearance that it's accelerating. But it, it doesn't matter if it's accelerating or not accelerating. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter for the point of this video. But what scientists do believe is that uh, space-time is like rubber bands. Let me get a rubber band, I'll show you. Okay, here's my rubber band. The universe is big, so I got a big rubber band. Anyway, space-time is a fabric of space that's, it's, of our universe, and it stretches as the universe expands like a rubber band. So as the universe expands, the rubber band stretches. Okay? Now scientists say that at the, when the end comes, there's going to be something now they call the big rip, where space-time itself just rips apart and all matter ceases to exist. Atoms fly apart, they break apart into the quarks, the quarks break apart into whatever uh, whatever makes those up, and all matter disintegrates, including space-time, and time itself stops to exist at that point, after the big rip. And most scientists believe that the big rip happens instantaneously across the entire universe, that everything just falls apart all at once. Uh, I don't believe that's what happens, and let me explain why. Because uh, cause it's like a rubber band, like I said, the rubber band stretches and at some point it stretches so far and that'll be uh, about 20, million, 20 billion years from now. The universe is 12.8 billion years old right now. They expect the big rip to happen right around 31 billion years old, approximately. That's when the scientists say the fabric of space-time will be stretched so thin that it just tears apart and then everything just ceases to exist. Okay, but let me explain how that works with space. I, I'd rather do this with the Higgs field, but that's kind of controversial. You can watch my other videos, but we're just going to discuss space-time 
because I can do it with space time just as well as I can the Higgs energy field. Uh, but what happens is your rear band expands as the universe expands and at some point it just snaps. Uh, but scientists believe it just like snaps everywhere but that ain't how it is. Now look at this. Your rear band stretches this way and as the universe goes out, let me draw some more circles in here. We'll just expand the universe out even farther like into the future. Okay, now look what happens here. You got the rear band stretching this way but that's not where it's going to rip. Okay, where it's going to rip is out here at the very far edges because you see as these as you draw these lines out, see how big this is compared to in here, how much this stretches. That's your rubber band is stretching this way, but right here is you're talking about stretching the rubber band this way. Not not this not long ways. You're talking about stretching this rubber band this way. And that happens the most at the very far edges of the universe. Now if you want to talk Higgs field, it's, the Higgs field is much heavier in the center of the universe and gets thinner at the edge of the universe and the big rip starts at the edge when the Higgs field gets too thin. Um, but we're not, well, like I said, we're just going to use space time for this. Okay, so if you want to measure the length of the circumference of this line, it's like three times what it is across the universe. So your sideways stretching out here at the edges is where your universe is going to rip first. And I don't believe it happens instantaneously across the entire universe. I think it starts at the edge and works its way into the middle as the big rip happens. And, and uh, it may happen fairly quickly, but it's not instantaneous, okay? Uh, actually, the universe will be expanding still as the big rip moves in, which will actually slow the big rip down some. It'll appear like it's not moving quite as fast, but once it gets to about the half point, halfway point, uh, the... the um, uh, space-time continuum is stretched so thin that the last half of the universe will disintegrate very, very fast. Um, now let me let me do another diagram here. Hold on. So I'm going to go back to these brains. Okay, when the brains touch, the universe is created in between the two brains, and all this energy is released, and the universe, the, our universe is here, in between, sandwiched between these two brains, which are just a fraction of a inch away from our universe separated by dimensions okay now let me let me move to another diagram so here's your two brains right here this is a brain this is a brain here's the space-time continuum our universe trapped between the two brains okay now one thing I was thinking if you go down here to these other brains these diagrams here the scientists claim that these things like flutter in the wind and they accidentally touched and created the universe. My problem with that is why has it not happened since the first of the universe? The universe is 13.8 billion years old. Why have the fluttering of these brains not touched each other since? Uh, you could have a universe created within our universe and destroy the present universe by the new universe. And that hasn't happened. Why has that not happened? I can tell you why it hasn't happened. We'll go back to the other diagram. It's because space-time continuum and our universe keeps the two brains from being able to touch. It's sandwiched between the two brains. The two brains cannot touch again until the present universe is gone, okay? Until after the big rip. Now, let's talk about the big rip. The big rip starts at the edges, at the, at the far edges of the universe and works its way to the center. It's not instantaneous across the entire universe. It's damn near instantaneous, but not quite. It, it happens very rapidly. Now let me move down and show you these other diagrams. Here's our universe as the big rip is happening. It's, it's shrinking. You can, you can see it. It's shrinking. Okay? It's, it's smaller than the old... It, the big rip is happening here at the edges and it's coming in. Now what happens as, as space-time disappears between these two brains, the two brains that were separated up here by space-time in our universe as the universe disappears at the edges, the brains move in toward each other. And you get something that looks a little bit like a wave. And it's moving inward. Now let me move down. Now here the universe, the big rip is still going on. And you're getting closer to the center. Okay. And these waves are moving in closer. And now once this initial wave goes by, these brains settle back to where they normally are. Uh, in their own dimensions, not actually touching. 
then they're not touching. These waves here don't touch. That ain't what causes the next big bang. Oh, I slipped. I said the next big bang. Oh, I shouldn't have did that yet. You wasn't ready for that yet. Let me, I'm getting there. Okay. Oh, my phone's ringing. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to go to some pictures of what this wave as it closes in. And you got to imagine too, let me move over here. This wave as it moves in, it's a circle. As the universe collapses, this circular wave moves in. It's a, it's a concentric circular wave that moves in on itself. And, and uh, now let me show you what happens with a concentric circle wave. Okay, I'm about to show you a video here of where they take a round pool with water and they cause a concentric wave that goes in a circle that moves into the center of the pool right here. And this is where the, the circular wave collides in a point, right in the center right here. Now watch what happens. Boom. Big bang. Now, as this wave reaches its dead center and you get that peak that I showed you in the other pictures just a second ago. These peaks that shoot out at a 90 degree angle to the direction of the wave is it causes these brains to come in and slam into each other at like nearly the speed of light. And now you're talking a huge crash between these brains and a tremendous amount of energy being released. Not just two brains just touching. These brains are then forced into each other at, at a tremendous with tremendous energies and then this releases a million times the energy of well, the energy that, that, that just caused them to collide and that supplies the huge amount of energy to create a universe okay and and uh, so that's 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 how it happens the destruction of the present universe causes the birth of the next universe and you don't have to have it they used to say that would only happen if gravity drew everything back into the big crunch. It doesn't have to be a big, big crunch. The big rip causes the next big bang. Okay? And uh, one other thing here. Now, for the religious people, the people that believe in God, and now I'm, I'm not a religious person myself, but I don't knock other people's what they believe. And maybe you do believe in God, and maybe you're right, and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but let's, let's put God into this picture and how he created the universe. Now God, if, there, if these brains touching is what caused the universe, then God had to create the brains, okay? So God has a way of entering these other dimensions and making these structures, okay? So therefore, all God has to do to create our universe is stick his big giant God fingers into these dimensions and just push these two brains together with his God fingers. That's all he has to do is just reach in and push them two brains until they touch and boom you have a universe just like that and if it's that easy for god to create a universe i'll bet he's created lots of universes lots of universes and uh and let me go over one other thing here real quick that last peak when those the, the uh, wave reaches the dead center, that peak that shoots up at 90 degrees angle to the direction of the wave, that peak could be, it could shoot way up from each brain. And there may be, let me move back up here, there may be other brains. It may not be just two brains. It may be lots of brains separated from each other by dimensions, okay? But this peak down here, may get so big it may just cross into some of these other brains so it ain't just our universe that's created there may be several universes created all at once all in different dimensions so and that would explain why the extra gravity because these universes would occupy the same space as our universe but in a different dimension and therefore some of the gravity is bleeding over they talk about dark matter dark energy they can't find where this stuff is coming from it's coming from the other universes bleeding through these dimensions into our universe into our dimension and that's that's that uh one other thing i want to add um now i've talked about space time here instead of the higgs field um uh, but i do want to mention i want to go back and watch the videos about the higgs field if if it works by the higgs field instead of space time there will be some warning signs before the big rip happens. When, when the universe gets so big and the Higgs field gets spread out so thin, it'll still be thicker in the center of the universe. That's why I think the big rip happens at the edge and works in. Uh, but because when the Higgs field thins, time speeds up. So when you get near the big 
rip. There will be entire civilizations out here at the edge of the universe that live and die while we sleep. While we spend one night sleeping, a million years may go by in another civilization out at the edge of the universe compared to a, a civilization that's near the center of the universe. You don't want to be in the center of the universe. There's too much radiation. You wouldn't survive. We're, we're kind of out part way out. We're in the perfect spot where we're at right now, okay? And, uh, but there would be some warning signs because as the Higgs field thins, um, gravity decreases, um, mass decreases. So if you suddenly start losing a lot of weight, but you're not getting any thinner, the big rip is about to happen. So, but that's, that's uh, 20 billion years from now. So I don't think we have to worry about that. But anyway, that's my video. And um, I wanted to get this out. I just thought this up yesterday while I was driving around. And just like the other videos about space time, I think this stuff up and then I immediately put a video out before I forget. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, I'm hoping that somebody proves this stuff at some point and I'll make the cover of time. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, so anyway, that's not my video. We'll see you for Matter of Time Part 5 if I think up some new stuff.